this fast moving environment, right? The hand that rocks the cradle rocks the world. The decay we are experiencing, especially among some of our national figures today on a grand scale, is a product of inadequate parenting. That's what I feel. So Taiwo Akilami is a social development lawyer, a co-founder of Power Parenting Company, parents' right to social protection advocate, and a publisher. Thank you for joining us. Thank <laughs> Remember, you, so much for having you can me. join the conversation. Tweet us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Show One with the hashtag Waze or SMS 081 80 384663. We are happy to have you. Thank you so much for having me. It's my, it's my duty to be here. Oh, it's a duty. Thank, it's thank nice. you. I think I'll go first with All my right. question. Thank you very much, Mr. Akilami, for joining us. Thank you so much. So I was going through your blog. You have a blog, right? Yes. And your last article, interesting, you um, wrote about parents' rights are children's rights. Yes. And in that article, you suggested that um, parents, it's unfair to, blame, to expect parents to be entirely responsible for raising children, yeah. and then the nation actually has a role to play, yes. e almost equal to the parents' role yeah. in raising great children. Yes. And when I read that, I thought, okay, that's interesting because I sort of take responsibility. Like if I, if my child turns out bad, I'm not going to think, oh, the nation was not um, enabled, not create an enabling environment. I just think it was my responsibility. So could you just shed more light on what okay. you were okay. referring to? Okay, let me start by saying that um, there's no nation on earth where the responsibility of raising children is that solely of the parents, not, not any serious nation. Hmm. Every nation of the future focuses on the children. The nations that are going nowhere focus, focus on nobody. They just focus on themselves. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? But what shall we be clothed? Now, this, the point is this. At a point in Iceland, young people were misbehaving big time. They were on drugs. They were involved in a whole lot of vices. So the government wanted to know why were children misbehaving? So they started the research. The research found that the children that were misbehaving were the children whose parents did not spend much time with. So the government started a scheme. Spend one more hour with your child, you get a certain amount. Really? Spend more hour with your child, you get a certain amount. Within a short period. So incentivizing yes, basically. Within a short period, that tide changed because parents were able to spend time with their children. Now, there are four institutions responsible for raising children. The first one is the family. The second one is the community. The third one is the state. The fourth one is the international community. Now, you don't, you don't bank much on, it, on the international community because at the level of the international community, is a matter of interest. The same international community that moved into Egypt within a short time and brought down Mubarak, went to Lib Libya and brought down Gaddafi, for the past five years or six years, they've not been, do, not been able to do anything in Syria because of the interests of China and, and uh, Russia. So uh, you don't depend too much on the international community. So you focus on the community. You focus on the family. What is the role of the family traditionally? The role of the family is to inculcate positive value system in their children, right? What is the role of the community? The role of the community is to support the family. So in the community, you have the media. In the community, you have the neighbors. In the community, you have the School. schools. In the community, you have the mosque. In the community, you have the church. In the community, you have the traditional institutions. Those are, they are community because they are closer to the people. Then you now have the state. The state, the responsibility of the state is to provide what we call social protection, food, uh, social amenities, shelter, education. Now, Chapter 2 of the Constitution of Nigeria says every child has a right to free education to university level. That's Chapter 2. Mm. Every child has a right to health care yes. from cradle. Every child has a right to shelter and all of that. Now, but what do we have today? So the point I'm trying to make is this, that until... So when you talk about nation building, nation building is annexing material resources, mm -hmm. Human resources, most importantly, because yes. in Singapore there is no human, there is no natural resources in terms of oil and all of it's that. And and that nation has demonstrated something. They moved from the third world to first world in 30 years. Yeah. Are you getting it? Yeah. So it's possible. So that we are a third world country is a matter of choice. So if you go to America, you say America 200 years ago, that's where they got their independence. So we are still toddlers. 
Singapore is younger than us. Are we together? And today, they are a first, they are a first world country because Lin Kuan Yu, God bless them with a man called Lin Kuan Yu, and Lin Kuan Yu focused on human capacity development. So the point I'm making is this. At the end of the day, until as a nation, we begin to take serious the support for parents. Is it because my position today is that children's right, parents' rights are children's right. The same way teachers' rights are children's right. If you 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 pay peanut you hire monkeys. And so we cannot we cannot continue to say um, uh, so trainers today gather parents together, we tell them what they should do, they take responsibility for education, take responsibility for all of that. Which nation on earth that private education is an alternative to positive education, uh, to, to public, public education. education. No, I'm saying that. That's public education is number one. Is number one. In Finland, the investment of private sector in education is almost zero. So the question is this. When, when see, these children that we're talking about, they are not grand citizens of Nigeria. When a child is born today, the child is a citizen of Nigeria okay. that should be entitled to everything a child should be entitled to. At the end of the day, if we continue to treat the matter like this, our children are going to be lagging behind. And when the world continues to move forward, we are just going to be playing catch up. And it's very sad. And Mr. Akinami, I would like to break um, the quote you here. Yeah. I understand your passion and yes. all that. But don't you think that as a society, as mm. parents, mm. we should take the issue of birth control seriously? Don't you think that a lot of parents have children they cannot cater for. Mm. And at, a point, at that point, they become a cost to the society. Mm. Don't you think parents should also take responsibility in well, that area? Well, when you are talking about parents, you are talking about two types of parents. Okay. You are talking about the educated parents and the uneducated. who understand what it takes to bring up children and will have few. You can compare that to the people in, 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 the, in the, 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 the humans of wood and drafts of water, the oipoloi, the people that Franz Fanon called the wretched of the earth. Those guys, you know, a poor man, for example, believes that an right. 80, 80, 80 million Nigerians are poor. Hmm. That, 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 as, 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 as late last year or this year, yeah. we overtook, we overtook uh, 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 India. India. Uh, India is 1.3 billion people. We are supposed to be like 200 million. But more than 80 million Nigerians are living on under one, less than $1, one dollar per day. Yeah. So, and uh, if you look at dollars, just look at 360. But don't look at 360. Look at when we were 120 before Buhari came. Mm. So you understand the level of thing, really what GDP people are dealing with. So now, now, when you have that kind of situation, what did China do? China did not leave the whole idea of family planning to parents because they know that the a government must be able to plan. A government, when, when, when China saw the way the population was going, there was a population explosion. What did they do? They came for many years, one child, one family. Recently, you know, they lifted it to one child, two families because they know the state must care for the children that, 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 that come to the, that, that are giving birth to in their nation. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, parents have a role to play, yes, that is for the upper crust. But where I live, I live in Magodo Phase 2. I don't see anybody who has six children, five children or ten children. You see, yeah. the poor people that <laughs> have this. You have you know. two, three. That's what we see around there. Well, and there's but, a reason for that. Because most of those people in this cave, they see children as their social security. Yes, for I their agree with you. In life. That's why they have you. all those kids. I agree but, with you. But, but let, let me bring this, you know, because when I hear you talk, you're. you're, you're Okay, so I'm a parent, and all this while I've been thinking, okay, I think the sole responsibility for me to, for, for this nation to transform and for me to, you know, I should take responsibility for my children. But when I'm hearing you clearly now, I'm hearing you pushing I'm it totally on, on in the, the hands of the yes. government. No, and, okay. you know, so what exactly will now be the role okay, of okay. me as okay. a parent? I want to know. Okay, let me first tell you, the deposits of potentials in the child no one family is capable to bring it out. Wow. On earth, none. Do you know the potential in a child that would discover, that would say, men were told we could not fly? Because one man sat under the tree, caught Isaac Newton, and apple fell on his head, fell on his head and he said on the base of that there's law of gravity. And for many years we could, we, we could not fly. But two brothers, the right brothers, sat down began to question that, that, that law. Yeah of gravity, and they found another law yeah, called the law of lift and the law of aerodynamics. And by those two laws, they overthrew the law of gravity. 
Anytime I'm, I fly, I, 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 I remember marvel the brothers. at the level of... Now, there was a time we were writing on stone, and the two brothers came, called the Bureau Brothers, and they were the ones who invented ball pen. The point I'm making is this. If you look at societies that are making a difference, they look, they are, there are plug-in systems that children can plug they into, enable. that families can plug into. Now, there's no nation that is making a difference, I don't see the template anywhere, where it is the sole responsibility of the parent to care for health, to care for education, yeah. to care for everything. Now, this is what has happened. So, this, this is what has happened. Let me quickly tell you what has happened. What has happened is that the primary role of parents hmm, is to... to nurture is to nurture, is to communicate value and exemplify value. When government fail in their responsibility to provide social amenities, what happens is that parents come under pressure. They are now distracted from their primary responsibilities. And that's the major thing. And let me give you a quick example. There's a guy called Jack Welch. Jack Welch worked for only one company all his life. He worked for GE Electric. Jack Welch one day had, a, had an heart attack. And they were rushing him to his hospital where he registered. On the way to the hospital, they found a community hospital and they checked him into the hospital, and that's where he was treated. That's where he recovered from. That's where he went back home. Jack Welch is still alive today doing Jack Welch MBA, his own personal MBA. Now, Jack Welch, now imagine that I took ill in Magodo where I live, and you are rushing me to the hospital where I register. And my wife sees a community hospital by the side, pay the kid to hospital, and they check me there. That is automatic death sentence. What I'm saying is that now, why did Jack Welch register? in the private hospital because of his class, he belongs to the upper crust. It's not because he could not have gotten that service in a small in, 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 in a community hospital, but just because he's a man of class, he's he retired as CEO, General Electric, a big company, and all of that. That's why he registered in a private hospital, which means what the private office hospital was 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 given was just privileges was just uh, exotic services. The primary service of saving life, every We're hospital can afford it. So that's the point. Now, when you have children that go to school and parents now are paying through their nose to sponsor their children this. in school, now remove school fees from the burden of parents today, you will see the level of pressure. You see how parents will be relieved. Now look, at the end of the day, whether we have this conversation or not, whether we pay attention to it or not, I have taken, I've been talking to parents for some time. And one, one, one time I began to sit down to say that, ah, look, everywhere I've gone, now I'm not saying that Nigeria will transform to develop country tomorrow, but I'm just saying that these are conversations we need to begin to have, yeah. because if we don't have this conversation, we are going to, no parents are going to put themselves under unnecessary body in Rwanda, here. Private schools are closing down. Of course. Hmm. Public schools are picking up. Because Kagame, you can say, is a dictator. America cannot come here and define what is democracy to us. So you can link one, you spent over 30, uh, more than 20 years there. Uh, and because he was, he was, he gave, he was the father of, 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 uh, of, uh, of Singapore. Singapore. So you can call Kagame whatever name you call him. But today in Rwanda, things are picking up. Private schools are closing down, public schools are coming up. So for me, this is, the, this is it for me. At the end of the day, parents cannot say we are not going to play our role because government is the one that has the role to play. As it is today, this is how it is. You take your victim as you find because it's the extra principle, yeah? You take your Criminal. victim as you find, find him. Yeah. This is where, where we are. This is what is going on. So we keep doing the much we can do. But what we need to do is to begin to speak truth to power. Hmm. No, we need to speak truth to power. We need to ask critical questions. If this child invents anything, is it only the family that will enjoy it? As a matter of fact, in law, after some years, your intellectual property distills into the society. You, you, you can't claim you can't, you can't any right. Can right on it anymore. If somebody invents something that helps society, it's not only the family that will enjoy yeah, it. But again, let me tell you the story of Lawrence of Ugbanini, the law. You know, the, the, one of the most notorious armed robbers the world has ever, Nigeria has ever seen. The guy, when Etimian was the IG of Nigeria, he showed up in the meeting of the Supreme Military Council. Anini was so popular that Babangida asked him, my friend, where is Anini? He, you know, it was publicly reported. Now, this is the point. Anini was the boy who had been on the street at a very young age. You know, you know that Anini was executed at the age of 26. That's when he was killed by firing sword, you know, because he was sentenced to death. But Anini had been a boy on the street, neglected. But when Anini started his reign of terror, it was not, he was not killing his family members. He was killing people the who elite. 
you know, the elite people, you know, because you needed to be rich, it was robbing banks, it was, it was, it was doing all of that. So we need to understand that the children who don't train today are going to be a major threat to us tomorrow. And, and you know, there's another point. We, we talk a lot about child discipline. I don't talk about child discipline anymore. How do I talk about child discipline? In a country that has no respect for, for dignity, honor, and, uh, and order. So I'm watching news with my child. News is supposed to be safe. I'm watching news. As I was watching news, I saw some, my, my child is with me, six year old, and he seen me. He said, Daddy, who are these guys? I said, these guys are honorable. Hmm. We want to change the narrative for our children, right? I said, these guys are honorable. He said, what does it mean to be an honorable? These guys are the people making law. Daddy, what is the purpose of law? Order. Or die, so that you can be or die in the society. And this is the opportunity. And as that is going on, he says, these chambers they are walking into, what? I said, that's the hallowed chamber. He said, what does it mean to be hallowed, daddy? I said, it means that it's a place where there is dignity, there is honor, there is respect. You know, don't you see when we read the Bible, we say, hallowed be your name. I said, hallowed chambers, that's where they are going. And they get in there. My son is saying, ah, daddy, I want to be a senator too. This thing is interesting. These are honorable people. No sooner that they get into the place, as they are there, one man just walks in and takes the maze. <laughs> and everybody is running after him. And my son is asking, Daddy, but you said, ah, that boy just said, ah, what am I going to say? Am I going to say his play, his joke? <laughs> and there are no consequences after. There's no consequences. That's, that's, you know, the, that's the sad because part. On the, because of the side the man is in. Too. This topic, we really cannot exhaust we it. Can't. But I want to ask a, a question. Because I see a lot of people. Because when you're saying that at, as it is now, what, where we are at yes. right now, we need to take ownership, right? Yes. We need to do what is right. So yes. do you think the people that are sojourning out of Nigeria, because everybody, I asked this question yesterday when we, had, we, mm. we were talking about education mm. and nation building. Mm. Everybody that is sojourning out of this country, the, the one excuse that everybody my keeps children. ringing in my ears is the future because of the, of the future, future of my, future of my children. children. So do you think that is the only solution to this problem that we have? It's a solution. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's a solution, but it's not the only solution. Okay. The truth of the matter, again, is that if the guys you are, where you are taking your children to, they don't build their nation, you don't have a place to take your children to. But again, nobody wants to be the guinea pig. Mm -hmm. That is my children I will put here so that while we are still fighting to, to, to change this nation. So if you can send your children abroad, why not? Because at the end of the day, you see, we are dealing with the fourth industrial revolution, internet of things. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with, with digitalization. The world has become a global village. Now, Jack Ma says, Jack Ma is the founder of Alibaba. He says that by the year 2030, 800 whooping jobs will have been they taken lost. by a machine. Sure. So the people that our children are competing with here in, in, in this world, they are not competing with their fellow children. They are competing with machines. That's they have to be able to develop skills that are superior to what a machine can bring. Machine, so we are talking about critical thinking and problem solving. Yeah. So here, when you ask children, go and draw elephants. Hmm. You give them the elephant to go and draw. You forget that children are reasoning being. Everything must encourage them to think, to create. Because somebody is going to, somebody is going to create the management that will be responsible for, for where these machines are. So it is no more fashionable to say you are a lawyer. It's no more fashionable to say you are a doctor. In a few years to come, when you enter the consulting room, you are going to be seeing machine. They are more accurate. They don't, they don't get sick. They don't go and leave. Everything is being digitalized. Human beings have been de-emphasized. The only human beings that will make a difference are the human beings that are able to think and create. Absolutely. So the question is, the kind of education we are receiving in Nigeria today, even the best of schools, they're still asking children to go and be drawing elephant, asking children to, to, draw, go, fish and to draw fish and label it. No, when, that's not the best of schools. When, <laughs> when, 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 no, no, you see, this is the problem with, with, with the education in Nigeria. Mm. Yeah? So if you bring British curriculum, right? right? Yes. You bring Finnish curriculum, right? You bring Afghanistan curriculum. Yes. Curriculum. Yes. Now, you now give it to somebody who grew up in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You forget that in Finland, their Ministry of Education is Ministry of Education and Culture. There's a culture behind curriculum. Those who develop curriculum are trying to communicate something to their children about their, because, culture. Ab about their culture. Today, you say, when well, before in Nigeria, Nigeria used to be good. People used to greet. People used to do all of this. I said, see, what now happened? 
If you say people used to greet, mm. people used to be cultured in Nigeria. Now they are no more cultured. What happened? It means there's a problem with communicating the culture. That's a problem. Because if you say before, people used to greet, people used to respect all of these things. Why are they not respected anymore? It means we have failed in transferring That's that culture. culture. That we said was working. And how did we transfer it? We transfer it by beating children. Kenny. It? <laughs> by shouting. It's interesting. That it doesn't you work. Listen. Kenny does not work. It does not work. Oh. Doesn't work. Mm. Thank you very much, Mr. Kilami. <laughs> so, in fact, I, I really, I'm now thinking of my children's school. And it's interesting. Some things you mentioned actually, you know, came to mind. So, at my kids' school, they're teaching them about money and they use the British curriculum. Mm. And trying to teach them the different aspects of money. We don't have the denominations that will help them actually comprehend it. So, mm. they have to refer to the British coins. Mm. And because we don't have, you, you've not seen a coin in Nigeria, right? Mm. So, it's, I, I hear what you're saying. There's a culture behind it. They have um, the resources to back parents, the curriculum. Of parents Parents are, parents are customers in private school. Customers are always right. Wow. <laughs> customers right. must ask questions. All right. So if customers ask questions, customers must be responded to. Very true. All right. Thank you so much. So, um, in a nutshell, I'll just summarize some of the things that, you, that have come out uh, to me today. So, one is that no one family is able to maximize the deposit in a child. It's not possible. The nation has a key role to play. There are four um, institutions, the family, the community, the states, and, and the international, the international community. And finally, the children we don't train today will end up hunting us tomorrow. Very much. Very <laughs> well. <laughs> I think I learned a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm speechless today. But let's and just remind our, um, our, for our quote for today. It says, at the end of the day, um, the most overwhelming key to success, the child's success, is positive involvement of the parent. And you, um, uh, um, Mr. Akilami, mentioned you nurture, you communicate value, and you said you exemplify that value, which is what um, um, Oge had also said. You must be the example that you want to, children you know, you want to understand your instruction. Yes. Children understand your example before they understand your, your instruction. instruction. So thank you so much. We have to bring you back. You have to promise us on live TV that you'll come back. I'll be back. I'm to discuss <laughs> particularly yes. child rights. And, and education available. as well. I'm thank available. you so much. Yeah, thank thank you, you so much. It's been a very, very insightful um, conversation. Remember to catch us tomorrow live again at 8 p.m. as we bring thought-provoking and engaging conversations your way. And um, have a lovely evening. Bye.